What is going on guys? Wiser here coming in with a recap of one of the last wars for 2.0. Uh, this was a random matchup against a clan called Axie something. Uh, you know, they're a fair play war clan. These guys, uh, these guys were for real. Uh, ended up sort of being uh, one of those random elite matchups. Um, that's definitely at least uh, what we classified the war as. And uh, we'll just jump on over and check out what happened. 79.69 for 2.0. You know, um, Axe some had a, had a few struggles. I'll, I'll go over that in a minute. Um, so I, I, overall, this core definitely doesn't dictate uh, definitely the quality of the clan over there. I believe uh, believe these guys are a solid group of guys. So you're gonna have to go ahead and check them out. Uh, but as you'll see, they uh, they missed a lot of our 11s, right? You know, only one zero star, one star, one star, one star, and one star. So that's a lot of stars right there. I mean, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, just from kind of clearing up those 11. So that ended up being their demise. Ultimately, they uh, got a couple DH10 triples in there and ended up leaving a nine on the board. But overall, great effort uh, from Axie something. So thank you for the war, gentlemen. Um, as you can see, Fair Play War Clan established uh, at least a few years ago. Uh, they are um, are recruiting, uh, just not TH11. So go ahead and check them out at www.axiesomething.com. Uh, then that's also going to bring me to another little... Um, Couple little announcements I want to talk about before we jump into the replays here. Um, look at Chad there. I think Chad defended, yeah, ninety nine percent bully. So that's a heartbreaker too. Just a tough war for Axie something. Anyhow, a couple announcements. Uh, right now, Venom One Hive Venom is going for uh, their hundredth hundredth win as a clan. Now, Venom sort of fell off of our radar we did absorb a lot of players from venom into swarm and made men of venom sorry more of a casual friends clan um so it is recruiting guys lower town hall levels it's just for fun we keep it for fun we keep it in case you know we want to do any sort of weird scrimmages or anything like that um you know, so that, you know, One Hive Venom is more of our family, friends, fun clan. Uh, whereas, obviously, One Hive Swarm is our training, recruitment, um, you know, feeder clan. Oh, excuse me. Um, so, with that being said, guys, um, you know, Venom is going for their 100th win. So, I, I got a, I got an account over there. Going to do a bit of a recruitment video. Just kind of give a, our clan breakdown and exactly what we're looking for and where, what our struggles are for recruiting right now. Um and just kind of what the process is like. Uh, because, you know, we do get a fair amount of applications from guys that have been in other top tier war clans, and we definitely respect that. Um, you know, if you you come from a top clan, a known, uh, well, fair play clan, you're gonna get a bit of a fast fast pass. But in the end, our clan, our clan uh, fundamentals, we're, we're built on, you know, a, a solid group of people, almost everybody in 2.0 on the 2.0 roster came up through the ranks and came up through Invicta and, and did their time, so so to speak, um, helping the family as a whole before they get to 2.0. And we do find uh, quite often guys kind of get into, you know, the swarm process. We'll fast track them after a war or two and put them in Invicta right away. But then, you know, you're you're expected to be in Invicta and help Invicta succeed. They are one of our second you know, our range war training clan, our second clan that we really like to focus on is, as being a competitive clan. Um, so if you, if you can't handle that fact that you're going to be in Invicta um, and, and you can't understand the fact that we treat Invicta the exact same as 2.0 and um, as, as for quality of clans and how we run them. And, um, you know, we, we do, we do expect you, anybody to, to be, be involved in that process for a certain amount of time to just show that you, you want to be part of the family, not that you just want to jump right up uh, to the top. And, um, anyways, that's how we build our team. And that's why I think we have long-term success because, um, everyone in 2.0 has been together for, quite a long time and you know Invicta included there's a lot of long time Invicta members you know right now we got some co-leaders it always happens too we always get you know good co-leaders that understand the clan family and would rather not necessarily rather stay in Invicta as a co-leader and help run it and make it successful um, but they understand that it, it needs to be done and they're okay with that because they're just being part of the process and they're part of the family and they're well respected within the family. You know, the names that come to mind right now, like Heartless, um, McGrady, um, although McGrady's now co-leader 2.0, um, you know, 
um, HB, uh, Bell at one uh, at one point, you know, a lot of these guys like Robaz. Robaz is, <laughs> it didn't even want to me to, to come to 2.0 when I was telling him he's got it promoted and he's he's so concerned because he, he, he evicted his baby and he, he, he it's just, it's great. It's, it's good to see that, that attitude. And that's what we're looking for out of people that, that just want to be here as, as part of the process. So go ahead, check out, um, the link down, uh, in the info section right underneath this video. And, uh, yeah, ch come check us out guys. Uh, you know, even swarm is, uh, that does a lot of fun stuff. I spent the last few weeks in Swarm actually placeholding the, uh, the leader title. Well, my brother-in-law was away on holidays. Um, is the leader. Um, his name is Clutch. So anyhow, guys, go ahead, fill out the application and we'll get you in. Let's check some replays. This uh, this war um, has a lot of uh, good attacks. Now, um, I believe like five hours into the war, we already had four Town Hall 9s with six packs. Uh, I know Patino, uh, Mr. Big Dog, Dally, and Flower actually all all had six packs. Um, the nice thing about that, MBD, Mr. Big Dog, and Dally are both fairly new uh, call-ups, uh, especially Dally. Dally, I think, is his only his second war, uh, full-time 2.0. So we're going to go ahead and check out one of his hits here. Uh, not number 30, though. I want to show you number, where is it? 28. <clears throat> oh, yeah. And hold my beer for me. How, how strange is that? This is not the actual hold my beer for me. Um, Kind of was interesting. We were all commenting on it when we saw the matchup. Anyhow, checking out Dally's hit here. Brings six dragons. Goes with a skeleton spell. I was talking about this uh, in the last recap. Mike O brought uh, the three skeleton spells, one being a max skelly spell. Uh, to try and take out an air defense. Um, someone had commented, and I, I watched back again, and, and the guy was right. The air defense was going to go down regardless. Uh, the Skelly spell sort of just sped the process up a touch. In this instance, because these heroes are so close, he drops the Skelly spells you're going to see on this um, this air defense. And the heroes yank them all over and away from the air defense. And it doesn't go down. He en ends up kind of being lucky. I think a bowler steps up and takes it. But as you can see, his entry is very, very clean. Nice jump spell. All the bowlers hop in. The queen hops in. The king hops in. Nothing is walking. Oh, comes that clan castle. Poison is already down. Queen is in there, and they're under rage. Going to start just bashing through that stuff. <clears throat> good, good value on, on his kill squad here. Absolutely. Um, so you see that skeleton spell go down, and boom. All the skeletons just immediately go over the heroes. So it's kind of a waste. Well, it's totally a waste. Um, the idea about this, though, is you're only bringing three troop space, whereas his absolute quake is going to cost you five troop space, um, or spell troop space, whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, so when you've only, uh, you know, you're, you're gaining an extra spell that way, but you just got to be very careful because it's, it's like I've seen, like we've seen in the last couple of examples, um, it's not even a hundred percent necessary. And sometimes you, you and you got to be very careful. Otherwise it's probably not going to work, but all these dragons now literally only have the six to three o'clock sections to go. They have the queen back and backing it up, helping it out. Uh, with that ability, still has a clean, still has a few cleanup troops to drop as well. So absolutely, it's going to be a tree star in the bag for Dally Boy here. <clears throat> Let's get these slow ass dragons to get moving. Bam, bam, bam! Nice hit, Dolly. Tree in the bag. Should have made another coffee. No way I'm going to have enough coffee to get through this whole recap. Uh, all right, 25. MBD. Another six-pack champ here. Goes ahead and brings the Lalo. Uh, a lot of guys really, really using the Bull Lalo. Um, it is still very, 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 very powerful, even though they kind of kind of gave a little, um, little bonus to Hogs. Um, this, I find, is the most predominantly used attack. Uh, I suck with it. I've been I've been friendly challenging with it for the last couple of days. I, I've always been a crown guy. Um, you know, I've always I, I was in before Valks were cool. Uh, I you know way back year we're talking year ago. I was you know I was a very I love doing my uh, uh, go Valos and my go Vahos. Um and obviously uh, that's just kind of what I stuck with because the Valks just 
are even more powerful these days and the way the healers work now and stuff like that is uh is obviously very beneficial to those attacks so always been a ground guy but as you can see look at that kill squad just absolute monsters just hops in there they're, they finally get the queen down um air defense number one is about to get taken down all these blues are converging on it very very quickly there's no spells for the for the balloons um you burnt most burnt all of them on the kill squad but when you get that kind of a push like both expos got so much value there was really again same kind of thing as that last attack only the six to three sections of defenses to to worry about and he's got so many balloons finally that hound does burst but all the balloons are right on top of the, that last air defense to go Down goes the mortar. It's clean up time. Pops all over the base. Queen's still kicking down there as well. Very sexy. Oh, there's a troll Tesla in the corner. <clears throat> That's tree stars in the bag for MBD. Good job, buddy. And what I have next. Uh, so it's 25, yeah, 24. So flower of this guy. <clears throat> it's a friendly challenge machine here. And that's the other thing too, like, um, you know, Patino and uh, flower specifically uh, are just friendly challenge machines. They're always friendly challenging. I love seeing it. I um, also love watching his uh, flowers attacks here because he hates golems. He, he prefers never to bring golems. He's totally an air guy, 100%. One of those guys that just, you know, I'm the, I'm the opposite, right? Um, I love ground. Uh, Chad loves his air. And <clears throat> you're going to see why. Uh, this Tesla farm does pose a little bit of problem. I think he was disappointed in himself that he dropped so many balloons because he, he the kill squad job was pretty much done like um at this point in time uh, yeah it's nice to sort of let his queen end up getting the teslas but i think she would have got them anyways without wasting those balloons and those spells so anyhow he goes ahead and uh starts the starts the main lalo deployment here from the 12 o'clock section two hounds in on the 12 o'clock air defense balloons sprinkled in all around be very conservative on his for, on his last two spells because again like he, he did sort of waste a couple spells there probably could have used just the rage there had a haste here to push everything down so hound number one burst gets that next hound in right away Way. good job with that couple balloons down just getting that mortar keeping the balloons moving in that clockwise rotation does have a raid spell here he's going to drop kind of over top of this last section to get everything on over to that uh, last remaining air defense <clears throat> and in goes that last hound <laughs> gets a max hound in there on that air defense uh does eat a mine in the face but there is absolutely no way possible that those hounds are going to burst so here goes that raid spell it's got uh really nothing other than that wizard tower uh, that can target air at this point and then arch tower down they go beautiful absolutely crushed it i would have got that max hound in just a little bit a little bit earlier there chad you almost wanted it to burst but just smashed it nice job buddy swags the gob <laughs> Bam. Yeah, I'm out of coffee and I'm not even like halfway. <laughs> no. All right, Pitt. Let's see. I think this is another Lalo here. Yeah. So this is, um, so Chad kind of had a suicide quad Lalo there. Um, Pitt's going, Pitt goes more old school. It's a shattered entry. Nice little funnel down. The idea here, right, he's going to jump right in between these air defense. Um let everything on into this core. They're going to get locked onto that queen. I believe that queen does stand in that little tiny uh, compartment there when everything goes in. Uh, but it's too much. The bowlers get in there. Everything gets in there. Uh, Oakland's in that clan castle. Nice early poison. Taking care of that. Goes ahead and drops that heal spell as well. Keep that king up at nice uh, nice and full health while he's taking uh, fire from the clan castle. So as that queen locks on, yeah. So she does kind of stand there. But like I said, like here come the bowlers. They just smash her down in two seconds. Doesn't matter if she's standing behind a wall. Golem's still doing great tanking. Big chunk of the base is hollowed out. And he goes ahead and starts his Lilo now. <clears throat> a couple balloons on each defense. Has no spells for his uh, sort of a max tax style. No spells for 
uh, for his balloons, but doesn't need it, right? Everything is targeting those hounds there. Just has to get everything in very, very quickly. All those all those whiz towers go down at the exact same time. So everything's getting right in on top of that last air defense. Down it goes. And even everything meets up with the heroes and bowlers still in there doing work. Down go those last remaining defenses. Absolutely smash this base pit. Another troll Tesla in the corner too. There's a lot of those. Boom. Nice job, buddy. Tree stars in the bag. Um, 19. Mick G. Hitting a 9.5. Um, sort of 9.5. So he finally got down that extra cannon. Um, only has the two expos. Uh, obviously, Town Hall 10. Point defense. And, you know, 30, 36, 35 heroes. Anyhow, so Grady's going in. Two golems down. Gets that funnel going. I thought that was an interesting choice to drop the balloon. Um, not 100% sure why he did that. I don't know. Um, I know he's going to end up telling me once he watches this. Um just seems kind of strange because that you knew that air defense was there, so all he was going to get was that super low level cannon out of a balloon. So I don't know. I don't know if that was worth it. Anyhow, <clears throat> so poison's down, bowlers are in, rage is down, absolutely perfect. Take care of that CC. Down goes some expos, getting some air defense at the same time. Let's go ahead and hollow out this core. The queen under this rage has access to absolutely every air defense, a couple more Teslas, another expo, just going to get huge value out of this kill squad. I believe this is the only air defense to, to stay up. So he goes ahead and starts to lala from three o'clock. That, uh, that lava hound takes a couple quick balloons or mines to the face. So pop, but the next hound is in right away and still has a haste spell. And I believe he drops the haste kind of over uh, this section to get everything in on top of that air defense um, as quickly as possible and over to the Tesla. So down goes the haste. Everything flies on over. Really actually good haste placement. He gets every single balloon to go through this haste. Look at that. And then they all shoot on over the mortar. So they're nice and close to these arch towers. They're the only threat left to go. And Grady actually <laughs> barely hangs on. I would have dropped, I don't know, it's hard to say, but <laughs> barely hangs on. Watch this. Down goes that arch tower. Oh, gets it just in time with two balloons to go. Mini, uh, mini and wizards, uh, minis and wizards. It pops all over the base cleaning up. So nice job, Grady. Bam, bam, tree in bag. Beautiful. All right, let's move on to some uh, Town Hall 10 action. <clears throat> I think I got a couple to show you. Let's start off with number 15, Zerzi. <clears throat> so uh, Zerzi's bringing a, a, go, um, a go ho here with uh, Bowler, so a go ho bow. Uh, just shattered entry, a couple, uh, couple quick golems go down, gets a baby D on the outside to make sure that funnel is good. <clears throat> Wizard on the other side there, goes ahead and opens up that wall, in goes a few giants to help out the, uh, help out the golems uh, as well. Just get in front of those bowlers, wants to make sure any, um, any traps get triggered before these bowlers get in. <clears throat> so out comes bowlers out of the CC. Queen is in there as well, backing things up. Really just wants to jump on over to this Queen Chamber, uh, take care of the Clan Castle, get an Inferno Tower out of the deal. Um, really just hollow out this core so he can send his hogs in around the ring, around the outside of the base. Because if you can get enough of the core taken out, um, you can really use the hogs and keep them under these three heels he's brought to make sure that they stay healed up, even through like a level one Inferno. So here come the hogs actually now. Um, speak of the devil. From one o'clock in they come. Nice poison spell. Take care of those uh, those lava hound pups. <clears throat> Does have to get a heal spell down. There it goes. Heals all those hogs right back up. They're just going to walk through all of this stuff. Those single giant bombs do absolutely nothing. Even the double, if, if they hit a double and they're standing under heal, they will be A-OK. -okay. So really just got to work through this uh, section of the base. Gets that Inferno Tower to go down. Really beautiful there. A couple Teslas to go. He's got one more heal. He's going to drop right away. Only a few defenses remain. Obviously, you know, an under level, an, un, um, I don't know, uh, uh, a lower weight Town Hall 10 defense wise because 
um, you know, a lot of lower level defenses. So Zerg really just takes advantage of that and just uh, rolls his hogs through the rest of that base. Queen's in there with the ability, still standing in the core, doing work. <clears throat> A little bit of time issue with that town hall up still there at uh, 2 o'clock, but no big deal for that many hogs. Queen steps over. Boom. Down it goes. Hogs finish it off, and that's tree in the bag for Zergs. Nice job, buddy. Chatty boy. <clears throat> so, uh... Chad, Chad opts for a Lalo, and that's why I, I thought this was really creative. Um, gets a very heavy kill squad going. Same idea as Town Hall 9, right? You, you just have to go a little heavier on the kill squad. you gotta got to sprinkle some bowlers in there uh, so they can get some good reach to, to air defenses and other defenses with uh, you know standing around the core section of a base. Um, obviously, the Queen's going to get in there and do work as well. So out comes a Golem, so that's always a, a pain in the ass to take care of. Uh, but uh, Queen's going to start working through that. The uh, bowlers get locked right onto that goal and start working it. Just got to make sure that balloon doesn't get any shots off on the bowlers and everything's going to be a-okay. So goes ahead and gets this uh, Inferno Tower out of the way. It's going to go ahead and get a couple air defenses out of the way at the same time. Tesla, whole bunch of good stuff going down there. <clears throat> Couple more shots. Down goes air defense number two, and in goes the Lalo. So here comes this first lava hound. A few balloons sprinkled on all these outer defenses. Kind of very, um, very smart. Gets the uh, protects the king very quickly there. So the king is now going to be free to walk around the base and do clean up all the way around. It's always important. I know that wasn't necessarily intentional for Zerds. Pretty sure he wanted his king in there helping his queen out, uh, but. Nonetheless, it ends up working out just fine. Nice rage spell there. Huge packs of balloons. Just got to get that one level one Inferno Tower to go down. And down it goes. Couple more defenses remain. Nice little free spell there too to slow things up. Bam, bam, bam. Zooms on over. Definitely a tree in the bag here. There's no balloons left, mind you, but doesn't matter. He's got so many pups left. King ability. There it goes. Down goes the Earth Tower, down goes the cannon, tree in the bag for Chatty Boy. Boom. <clears throat> and I got one more 10 versus 10. Good old Iceman. <clears throat> Bringing another Lalo with a, with a walk and Valk. So, um, Exactly what I said though about this. <laughs> Gotta always love that. Nice quick reaction for Ice there. Um, actually, I wonder if this was, you must have had that scouted. I don't know if this was a fresh hit. Maybe it was. Um, but if it wasn't and you purposely meant your healers to tank for that wizard, that would be awesome. And even if, if you didn't purposely mean for it, good reaction time there, Iceman. Just dropping that quick whiz, take care of that Tesla. So anyways, Queen's in, wall's open. She's going to end up walking right into this stuff, get an air defense, get a level two Inferno Tower taken care of. Going to get big value. Has a baby dragon, a wizard, uh, uh, sorry, a mini down here at six o'clock. Might have pushed that baby D out a little bit so you got the rage effect, but whatever. Um... Queen's in there about to pop that ability. Make sure that Inferno Tower goes down. Beautiful. Out comes that Clan Castle. So down goes the Poison. Really, that's the only threat left to go here. Um, and then Ice can send the... Here, here goes the King. King's going to kind of just tic-tac-toe through this. Really wants to make sure he gets into this compartment now. He's meeting... like Just just beautiful timing and everything. In goes the Valks. In goes the King. Doesn't need a doesn't need any sort of Golem or anything. Now the Queen and the Valks are standing in there. They're going to get the Defensive Queen and get another good set of value here. Going to help go ahead and hit that ability on the king. Want to work through that crap. Down goes that defensive queen. Nice freaking job. So in comes this Lava Hound number one. Three balloons on each of these defenses on the outside. Lava Hound number two. Down it goes. Going to just get everything right in on top of this, uh, this section right here. A couple quick haste spells go down. Beautiful. Throws everything right on top of those remaining defenses. Soon as this uh, air defense goes down, that hound is now going to fly on over to that last air defense. And there's really only one little section, you know, down here at the uh, 9 o'clock to worry about. This expo uh, has a perfect amount of balloons to go over to the expo, perfect amount of balloons. Head on over to this air defense. A couple more balloons to do a little bit of distraction on the backside here. Um, still has that hound to burst. I believe it does burst at the exact perfect time here, right as everything gets over to the Tesla. And pop, perfect, down goes the Tesla, down goes the Wizard Tower. 
Boom. Crushed it, Ice. Nice job. <coughs> I want to know about that healer. Was this a fresh hit? Did you or did you mean for that healer to tank? Either either way, good job. Three stars in the bag. All right, and last but certainly not least, I got BP with an 11 versus an 11 triple. Uh, so nice, nice looking box base here. We've been we've been practicing these. Uh, really, really want to get, get very comfortable. They're Town Hall 11s in the new meta. Um, where if you run box bases versus us, we're going to be three-starring your 11s. That's what we're working towards at the moment. So then that leaves clans with serious decisions. Because if you run uh, Town Hall 11 box bases, yeah, you're forcing our 11s to hit your 11s. However, um, we're going to make it so that we're going to be getting three stars on your 11s. And then, uh, you know, that takes a lot of pressure off the Town Hall 10s. So kind of depends, you know, for the enemy war strategy against us, um, I think that's going to have a, a really good effect because um, you, you're not 100% sure what you're going to be able to do against us. Um, and BP is leading the charge here. He's got, you know, huge funnel created on the 9 o'clock, huge funnel created at the 6 o'clock, and drops his Grand Warden and a bunch of bowlers, a couple giants to do a little bit of tanking. They get a jump spell down, just absolutely perfectly placed. They're going to hop onto this core and get big value. Poison is down. Clan Castle is dead. Queen is still doing work on the outside here. She's about to step up now, take care of that defensive queen. Bam, bam, down it goes. Look at these bowlers. They just absolutely crushed that core. Smashy, 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 down it goes. Couple expos remain. Grand Warden doing really good work, keeping those bowlers up in the core there. They do end up sort of pittering out, and I believe the Warden and the Queen end up finishing this raid, but it is an 11 versus 11. Um, so that's pretty much expected to happen eventually. There are just so many defenses and so many walls now. It is, uh, it is pretty crazy, actually, um, especially for Town Hall 10s trying to step up. It is, it is a whole new game. I, uh, I'm very interested to see as they sort of make little tweaks to things and this Halloween update coming out, see if anything kind of happens. Um, I'm interested to see the direction of, uh, of the meta now because uh, the game has changed, that is for sure. Still has a, one bowler left, down it goes. But yeah, the Queen and the Warden absolutely going to finish this off. Boom, boom, boom. Hit that Queen ability. Down she goes. Tree in the bag for BP. Very, very sexy, buddy. Good job. <clears throat> Anyhow, uh, that's a long enough recap, I think. Uh, I've been rambling on, you know, I, uh, I finally got some time this morning uh, to sit down and just do a, do a really thorough recap. And this was actually a good one. It was a lot of really nice attacks, so I didn't want to didn't want to miss anything. Actually, I'm going to do a little cleanup episode, too, of a blunder that I had. And uh, Bucko uh, ended up reaching out to me and said he wanted to do the same plan with a couple tweaks because I did get very close. I think I had a 90... 94% or 91% or something like that. Uh, so Bucko and I talked and uh, I'm going to kind of go over the plan of uh, what I what I did and what I thought as a fresh hit and then what Bucko did to adjust to, to get three star. So I know you guys appreciate those. So anyhow, calling it a day. Uh, I'm going to get that video. I was just talking about going pretty soon here. I'm trying to take a little break, but uh, that'll do it here for your wisdom from Wiser. Just trying to help bag that next three star. Till then, I'm up.